Okay, let's uh, finish up the chords here on Mr. Tambourine Man. Uh, we left off at the end of the A section where we have the D to the D2 to the D sus, going into the B section of the song that starts on the G chord. Okay, so two things I want to discuss initially. In this song, every time the uh, chord is A, we always have this pattern of the A, A sus, A. So later on in the chord sheet where I had the A chords, I didn't bother to put that in. Just assume that that's what you play. I just think it makes it look a little less muddy on the paper. But every time you're, you're in a measure of A, it's going to be that one, two, and, and three. One, two, and. It's actually one, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. So keep that in mind. The other thing I wanted to discuss was the strum in general. I'll demonstrate it on the first chord, on the G chord. When we talked about the strum, we talked about the fact that it's always an up and down motion and we are just sometimes missing on a down or on an up. Um, that's the case with a lot of strums. Um, so this is a very typically used strum, so it's actually a good one to know because you can find an application for it in a lot of songs. But I want to review it from this standpoint. We talked about the strum being one, two, and, and four, and. Now, if you put the and on the four, one, two, and, and four, and, that gives you not much time to get to the next chord because you're playing on the and of four in the previous chord. Now, you can leave the and of the four off. In other words, play it like this. One, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. That gives you a little bit more time to get to the next chord. Either way will work. So it's actually a good idea to practice that. Pick any chord, say the G chord, and practice that strum with the and on four and without the and on four. This way you can make yourself very aware of the difference. I'll do a little bit of it on the G and I'll alternate between having the and on four and leaving the and off four. So we'd have one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four. Which means that on the and of four, I'm simply not hitting the string on the up. And once again, remember we talked about the fact that this is a constant up and down. So when I'm doing that strum on the four on the fourth beat, I'm going four and sorry four and. If I want to leave the and out, it's still the same strum. I just miss on the up four. I want that hand in position for the next one, which is a down. So when I get to four, I can either go four and or four and and miss it. So that's what this it would look the exact same. If you're looking at it head on, the strums look the same, but they sound slightly different. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. I miss it but I'm ready for the next one down. Okay? So keep that in mind when you're practicing the song. You want to be aware of that option, that, um, that fact that you can play on that fourth beat either way. So let's pick it up from where we left off. We left off on the D. So if you were listening closely, you notice when I played that 
uh, last section, uh, the last two measures before we go into the B section, I didn't put the end on four, did I? I went one, two, and, and four, one, two, and, and four, without the end. And that's the way I'm going to play the rest of the song, is without the end on four. So I'm going to, once again, start there from those two measures of D, and then I'm going to keep right on going. Now remember, later on on the, on the page, when we get down to those A chords, I'm going to continue to play that A, A sus, A pattern. It's just not written in there. If you need it written in, go ahead and write it in. But I think you can just be aware that that measure will always sound like that. So what, picking it up at the D, coming into the B section, go. get to that final D chord, the introduction comes back in there. So taking it from that final A on the very bottom line there, uh, if you were playing along, forth. I believe it just fades out. So taking the two sheets together, that if you add the intro at the beginning and the outro at the end, which is the same as the intro, that's basically the entire song as recorded by the birds, uh, you know, their, their hit version back in the 60s. So you should be able to play along with the song. Um, hopefully, at the regular speed, if not, try it at three-quarter speed, okay? But it's, once again, it's a really good idea to play it along with the recording if you can. <laughs> 